This is Rob Tebbett for Boxing Social. I'm delighted to be joined by a very happy looking Mark Tibbs. We're here at the Dillian White Joseph Parker fight in the post fight press conference. Mark, first of all, congratulations on guarding your man to a resounding win over Joseph Parker. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, he done a, he done a wonderful, wonderful job tonight uh, against a, a very decent man, warrior in Joseph Parker, a former world champion with ambition, with youth and just lost his world title, not too long ago lost his world title, so very good boxer, very good pedigree, he done, he done marvellous, Dillian White done marvellous. Um, what did you make to the opening to the fight? It seemed to me that Joseph Parker wanted to come out and just let his hands go, be a little bit busier than he was perhaps against uh, Anthony Joshua, is that something you'd expected? Yeah, I'll be honest, you, I expected him, uh, him to do that because uh, you know he was getting a bit of stick, our, uh, he didn't let his hands go before in his last two fights. But, um, and I thought, you know, against Dillian's build and style, you know, a boxer would do that, box around, box around the fighter. That's, that's, that's the normal way it works. But I, I, I'd like to have Dillian have got close, roughed him up, and take that little, set that little bit of energy away from him early doors. But Dillian can fight long, but to fight long against a very good boxer with good pedigree at that level is going to be a tough call to do. But, you know, he held his own, he held his own. Mid-rounds, he started uh, getting to him and uh, had to have a fight of him. Had to have a fight of him. Now, a lot of people, when you talk about Dillian White, they automatically assume he's this warrior, he's this brawler. Uh, the second knockdown, we'll come on to the first knockdown in a minute, but the second knockdown was a lovely catch and shoot, caught the right uppercut, yeah. worked with the left hook. Is that something that you've been working on in training camp? He, yeah, well, he's good at that, Dillian, catch and counter, catch and counter. I li I'd like him to catch and counter and put the extra one in, but he likes the one. But we'll work, we'll work on that, we'll work on that. That's a good shot, he does that, he times that really good. It's a really good shot of his. See, when he does, when he does catches, and ca catches and counters, when he, why he's waiting for them catching counters, he's got to box a little bit more, box fight a little bit more. So stop waiting for them. You know what I mean, we'll get there though. He does it, he does it, he does it. But tonight, I mean. Uh, a lot of the talk going into this was about Joseph Parker's jab and how he controls the distance and works well from that sort of mid to long range. Dillian White's jab was very, very effective throughout the fight. Um, was that something you'd anticipated and having success on? Well, yeah, I mean, Dillian, Dillian's got long arms. He's got a wonderful sharp jab and it's hard. It's hard, you know what I mean? And um, he's got various jabs he does, but um, yeah, no, the, jab, the, jab's the, key, the, jab, the jab's the key to any fighter and any boxer. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you've got, have, you've got to have a jab. You've got to have a jab. Something that I speak to Dillian about every time I sit down and interview him is, is progression under you since you guys started working together. I think it's seven or eight fights we've been together now. How difficult, or how different, rather, is he to the fighter that you initially had? Well, do you know, he's always been... When I first met Dillian, he, he was... Uh, I could tell he was very, very ambitious. And... Uh, he was, he was different. I can't explain it. He was different. And I'm still learning about him now, every day. But he's got something which uh, he's got something which uh, which I can't put into words. You know, he's a he's a very special, very good grafter, very very good grafter. Um, he's got his own mind, but it'd be nice if he listens a little bit more. But that's what makes him it. it can't, take, can't take that away from him. You know what I mean? But we've got to find a, a you know, we've all, we all got to find like a, find, a, find a, a way to communicate and get around stuff. And then we're doing it and we're getting there. He's got a good team with uh, the Loughborough University. They're doing a good job with him. And yeah, we're all putting a lot of time into him and, and it's paying off. Yeah. Just finally, um, Dillian has made no secret of his willingness to fight anybody anywhere. As a boxing fan, first and foremost, that is, is so refreshing for me to see. He's constantly willing to challenge himself with these opponents. That being said, where would you like him to go next? Well, Joe, you know I'd like him to have a, a good couple of weeks off. <laughs> good couple of weeks off. And uh, it'd be interesting to see what him and, him and Eddie have got uh, in the pipeline. Yeah, yeah. Anyone you fancy in particular as a trainer that you feel you may match up well with? Well, Joe, you know what? There is, but <laughs> I'm not going to say. Listen, I fancy him with anyone, you know, but it ain't been the. We haven't had a, a smooth camp, right? We haven't had a smooth camp, but we're not going to talk about it because we don't make excuses. I more or less just did that night. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Yeah. Okay, well, rather than talk about the next fight, I will say congratulations on this fight. Thanks very much for speaking to Boxing Social. Look forward to catching up with you soon. Lovely stuff, Robert. Thanks very much. Good night. Thank you, mate. Good night.